Welcome back to the build series. It is now time to add in receivers to both of these builds. And as always, I'm making everything as different as possible to bring you guys twice as much information. I'll be doing this multi rotor first, and for this one, I'll be using a Turnigy IA6C receiver to use with my Turnigy Evolution transmitter. With the other build, I'll be using a FreeSky receiver and the FreeSky QX7 transmitter. If you are using a FreeSky transmitter, don't skip through the video because I'm only going to say uh, these things once, so it's best to just watch the whole video. Some plugin chores can accept more types of receivers than others. The Dodo can actually accept almost all, or actually it probably does accept every type of receiver. You'll see here 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to 8. This is for PWM receivers, which are the big boxy receivers, and you'll have one signal wire going from each channel from the receiver to every pin on the flight controller for a total of eight channels. Then of course you will have a ground pin at the very top and a five volt source pin right here to power the receiver. PWM receivers, as far as uh, the multi rotor hobby, they are outdated and not many of us use them. Uh, I mean they are still great for airplanes and gliders, things like that, but for multi rotors they're obsolete. The next type of receiver is going to be a PPM receiver and you will see here on channel number one it's also shared with PPM. Uh, with a PPM receiver you'll still get eight channels it's just all eight channels are going through one signal wire so you would have ground, power, and signal. Then the other type of receivers are going to be SBUS and IBUS. The IA6C actually does both of them. You can pick and choose which one you want. With SBUS and IBUS it's similar to PPM in the sense that you will get multiple channels through one signal wire. In fact, you'll get uh, 16, well, it depends on what brand you're using, but about 16 channels through one signal wire, where PPM, you usually only get about eight. Uh, SBUS and IBUS is also faster than PPM. The difference is gonna be, instead of having a dedicated pin for SBUS and IBUS, you actually need to use a UART. I'm gonna flash a picture on your screen of the back side of the Dodo. If you look on the right side, on channels three and four, you'll see U3RX and U3TX. So channels three and four are shared with UART number three, and every UART has a receive and a transmit. For receivers, you want the receive. So you would want to connect your uh, SBUS or IBUS signal wire to channel number three for UART three receive. Now on my build, I'm already using UART number three to send data to my on-screen display. So I can't use that UART, I have to use a different UART. So going back to the uh, back side of the Dodo, if we look on the left side, uh, where you see UTTX and UTRX. So there we have UART number two, transmit and receive. Once again, I need the receive, not the transmit. Now I also have the option of uh, UART number one, if you look below that, where it says U1RX and U1TX. The thing is, uh, flight controllers that use the CP2102 chipset and drivers, their UART number one is shared with the USB. And this is how the flight controller communicates with your computer. Because UART one is already sending and receiving data to be able to talk to your computer, we can't use UART one for a receiver. Now you could use it for an on-screen display because it is already sending and receiving data, which is what on-screen displays need to work, but if you uh, do that, then whenever you go into beta flight, the flight controller will be trying to talk to the OSD and computer at the same time, and that's when things get crazy. Now, if you are using a uh, receiver with telemetry, like we're about to do on the next build, and you need more UARTs because telemetry needs its own UART, you could move the on-screen display from the UART that I have it on now, and I could put it on a soft serial port. Just look at my OSD playlist and I show you exactly how to do that. And that way you will free up an extra UART and uh, then you'll have two more UARTs for SBUS and telemetry. So in this case, I'll be using UART number two. And UART number two is gonna be located on this pin right here. I know it's hard for you to see on this build so I'm just gonna use this dodo. I could use this ground and this 5 volt power source to power my receiver and then send the signal wire to this pin here, uh, to that UART number 2, but instead of reaching wires all across the board, instead what I'll do is, there's another 5 volt pin right here, 
and this pin right here is a ground pin. So I'll be using ground, power, and then signal to UART number two. I have already removed the case from my IA6C receiver. If you do want to know how to depin this and make it smaller, then just look at my Turnge Evolution playlist. Link is left for you in the description. Now, uh, if you still have the case on, then you're probably wondering what this fourth pin is for. Uh, on the case it says PPM and this is a PPM pin, but like I said, IBUS and SBUS both are better than PPM, so there's no sense in us to using PPM. So you don't need this wire whatsoever. Now you can see on my dodo how I have it wired. Black is ground. I'm using this blue wire for power and my white wire is going to the UART. To mount the receiver onto the flight controller, I just use this foam tape. Some guys are totally against mounting the receiver right on top of the flight controller. They say that it affects the gyro and uh, you know puts more vibrations in the gyro. Uh, I disagree with that. I don't know. Everyone has their own opinion mount your receiver however you want it's your build don't let me tell you how to do it i'm just saying i mount my receivers right on top of my flight controller and it's not i really don't think it's going to affect anything unless you have a race flight revolt its gyro is super sensitive and in that case i wouldn't but other than that i have no problem doing this with a couple of these strips on the back side of my receiver i'm just going to stick it right on top of the flight controller now for your antennas, uh, like I said, I do have a video showing you how to shorten your antennas, link in the description. But before you shorten the antennas, you want to figure out how you want to mount them. Most guys mount it, you know, they'll run the, the antennas through the top plate and then run zip ties on the top plate and heat shrink the antenna to the zip tie. I personally don't like doing that because the zip ties always end up breaking and uh, I don't know. Once again, do it however you want. This is how I do mine. I just take my antennas shorten them up a little bit and then I flip it around to the back side I'll put the antenna right here and then just put a piece of electrical tape over it this will affect your range I'm not denying that but it, it will not affect your range as much as you may think not only that but if this were a GPS build where I'm trying to get max range then yeah I would totally mount my antennas facing straight up but this isn't a GPS build, this is a freestyling and racing build. Uh, and I really don't fly that far away from myself. I mean, I guess what I'm trying to say is, with the antennas mounted just like this, my I lose video signal before I lose RSSI to the receiver. So, I see no problems here. Because if I lose video first, then obviously I don't need any extra range, so there's no sense in me. I don't know. Like I said, it's up to you. If you want a full class on how to set up your Turn G Evolution, once again, look at my Turn G Evolution playlist. But to set this up, just the quick and dirty, you want to go to go to output mode, and I will be using iBus, so I have iBus selected. And if you just completely ignore what's on this side because the transmitter is going to ignore it. It's only going to see what you have over here because we're going to set up iBus in Betaflight. Um, and if you want SBus for whatever reason, then you just pick SBus. But I'll be using iBus. Then you want to go to RX Bind. If you are using the IA6C receiver, you do not have to hold this button down. All you do is just apply power. You can either plug in the USB cable to your flagging chore or you can plug in a battery. It doesn't matter. And then this will say RX bound or whatever and automatically exit the screen for you and then you just back out and you're bound and good, good to go. If you are not using the IA6C, if you are using the X6B or something like that, then you do have to hold the button down. And we are done with this one. We still have to set up in beta flight, but don't worry, I'm going to cover that later. Uh, actually, I'll do that next in the next video. Now for this one, like I said, I'll be using a free sky receiver. Uh, I would say the top three choices are going to be the X4R SB, the XSR, or the XM Plus. The XM Plus is the smallest, and for that reason, it is my personal favorite. It does not have telemetry, 
but personally I d could not care less about telemetry because we're using the built-in on-screen display of this flight controller and it's a great OSD. I don't need my transmitter screaming at me what I already know because I can already see it on my screen. But once again that's just my personal preference. If you do want telemetry then uh, either the XSR or the X4R SB. I will be showing you how to do this with the X4R SB uh, just because it does have telemetry and a lot of guys use it. But the setup is going to be exactly the same for the XSR. And the S bus part will be the, exactly the same for the XM Plus. Just remember it has no telemetry. So for this one, the same rules still apply. With these three pins, the one on the edge is the ground, the one in the middle is your 5 volt power source, and this one is your PPM and S bus. So both are in the same pin. And because this is an S bus pin, that also means that it is a receive pin for a UART. So if I'm going to flash a picture on your screen, look in uh, the look where it says TX1 and RX1. So that's UART number one, transmit and receive, which is going to be located on this pin. We got transmit and receive. Then we have UART number uh, six to the right of that one. We have transmit right here and receive right here. Uh, because it's UART number 6, that does not mean that this has a total of 6 UARTs. The F4 processor flag controllers, instead of going 1, 2, and 3, they go 1, 3, and 6. So it's still 3 UARTs. And then up here we have uh, transmit for UART number 3 and receive for UART number 3. Now because UART number 1 is located right here, it's also the same the receive pin is the same as this receive pin. The only difference is this receive pin has a hardware inverter going to it where this one does not. And that's another thing you need to know about F4 flight controllers. With F3 flight controllers there's basically inverters on all three of the UARTs. On the F4 boards there's only one inverter. And we need these inverters because with FreeSky receivers the S bus and telemetry signals both are already inverted and we need to invert the signal again which is the same thing as uninverting it. All three of the receivers that I mentioned, the X4 RSB, the XSR, and the XM Plus, all three are capable of using SBUS. So we will be using this pin for SBUS. So let's go ahead and get ground, power, and signal. Alright, we've got those three wires on now. Now let's talk about telemetry. Because there's only one hardware inverter and we are already using it for the SBUS signal wire, we have no more hardware inverters remaining. So we have to uninvert the telemetry signal from the receiver manually ourselves. If you look on the back side of the X4 RSB, you will see this little uh, chipset right here. And I just took my wire and soldered it right to this single leg on the back side of it. This will get you that uninverted telemetry signal. If you're using the XSR, then it's going to be right here. So you got two legs on this little black thing right here, and then you have one leg on the other side. Solder your wire to this one leg. Once again, if you want a better picture to see what it looks like, uh, just look in the description. I'll leave you a link to the video. Going back to the wiring diagram, uh, we don't want to use uh, UART number one, uh, which let me go ahead and explain. Like I said, our S bus wire is going to UART number one, but unlike the Dodo flight controller, this flight controller has a virtual COM port. Flight controllers with virtual COM ports do not share any of their UARTs with the USB. So you don't have to worry about that problem that I was mentioning earlier of the flight controller trying to talk to the receiver and your computer at the same time and things going crazy. It's not going to happen because the USB is on its own. It's not being shared with anything. And that is why we can use UART number one on this flight controller. But like I said, because we are using UART one for this uh, S bus signal wire, we need a different UART for the telemetry wire. I know that with UARTs, you have, you have transmit and you have receive. We are already using the receive for UART number one, which means the transmit for one is still open and transmit is what we need for telemetry. But UARTs can only do one thing at a time. You can't make it send telemetry and receive from the receiver both. So we need a transmit from a different UART. So I'll be using transmit for UART number six 
which is located on this pin right here. Take my telemetry wire and solder it on. And there we go. Obviously, I, I would normally put heat shrink around this because I don't want it contacting anything else in frying. Um, I'm not actually going to use this receiver. Uh, you'll see. But yeah, just make sure you put heat shrink around it or something. If you are using the XSR, then uh, just look on the back side. My color codes are different, so I can't, I don't remember what the colors are. But you have ground, power, uh, then the telemetry wire is in the middle. Then this wire next to the end, that's the PPM wire, and then the one on the very end is SBUS. You do not need this PPM wire, just cut it off. Just use SBUS. It's kind of like with the IA6C. It, it can do PPM and SBUS both, but you only need one. To bind this receiver, and this goes for the QX7 and the X9D, it's going to be exactly the same for both. Uh, let's go to our model selection page, and then page over once. I'm going to scroll up, which will take me to the bottom of the page. You want this to set this to D16 mode, channels 1 to 16, and then click bind. It's going to chirp. With this one, you do have to hold the button down. And then apply power to the receiver. Either plug in a LiPo battery or a USB cable. Either way, it's going to be the same. I'll see how I get the solid green and solid red light. Then I can release the button. I'm getting a solid green and blinking red. Unplug the battery. Press enter on your Tyrannus to make it stop chirping and exit the bind setup. Then plug a battery or USB back in again. And you should have a solid green light. If you have a solid green light, then that means it's properly bound. If you're getting two different lights at the same time, then that means the firmware from the receiver and your transmitter is conflicting. Uh, they don't match up. You have to make them match. So once again, look in the description, and I have a video showing you how to change the firmware of your receiver. And I don't mean version numbers. What I'm talking about is there is a like an EU version of firmware, and then there is a non-EU version of firmware. So one of these has one of those versions, and then the other one has the other. That does it for this video. In the next one, I'll take in Betaflight and show you how to set up the receivers.